You're listening to the Astromami newsletter read aloud version of my daily horoscope published on Substack. If you would like to read this, please click on the link in the description box below. Without further ado, here is the daily horoscope. This week, we are ascending the lift hill of another hectic roller coaster. Eclipse season starts next week. Be an astro pepper. Daily horoscope for Monday, October 17th, 2022. Welcome to the Astro Mommy newsletter, a daily horoscope that hopes to shine a light in the dark, helping us all see where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. The Astro Mommy newsletter is a reader-supported publication, meaning it only thrives thanks to the generous support of lovely people just like you. The two best ways you can support my work are to share this newsletter with a friend and to consider upgrading to a paid subscription. Whether you're a first-time reader or a long-time subscriber, thanks for being here. I truly appreciate you being in my community. I hope you enjoyed today's horoscope and card reading. Blessings. Good morning, friends. So just in case you missed the updates last week, you can now tailor your subscription preferences in Substack so that you only receive the newsletters you want. I figured out how to make the regular written newsletter, the podcast, and the Lunar Poetry Ritual all separate newsletters that you may opt in or out of. All you have to do is go to Substack via the link at the bottom of the newsletter, click on the menu, and manage your subscription by checking or unchecking the newsletters you would like to receive. Also, the Weekend Post is a paid subscriber-only perk. Monday through Friday's daily horoscopes are free to all, but the Weekend Post is for my paid subscribers, i.e. people who don't want to miss anything. I think that is all the housekeeping. Reply to this newsletter with any questions, or you can email me at astromommyastrology at gmail.com. Okay, the astrology is about to get gnarly. This upcoming week, we are dealing with the moon in her third quarter phase, opposing Pluto and squaring the sun on Monday. Venus and the sun trine Mars on Monday and Tuesday, and then on Wednesday and Thursday, Venus and the sun each square Pluto. Starting next weekend, we have so many things happening, but most importantly, on Saturday, October 23rd, 2022, the sun and Venus both ingress into Scorpio at basically the same time, and Saturn stations direct on the same day. Then, the partial solar eclipse is happening on Tuesday, October 25th, 2022 at 2 degrees Scorpio, 0 minutes, very close to the south node at 13 degrees Scorpio. That is not all. The following week after that is when Mars stations retrograde. These next two weeks are pivotal weeks of the whole year, so that is why I want to give you a rundown of what to expect from the partial solar eclipse and for the Mars retrograde in Gemini for each of the sun signs. I'm putting together a special horoscope for all 12 signs for the partial solar eclipse and the Mars retrograde, and they should both be out shortly. This is a week where we are starting the ascent up another lift hill towards the first drop of a roller coaster. We've boarded, buckled up, and now we can't get off. This ride will be scary for some and exciting for others. It just depends upon who you are in these types of situations and how this eclipse season is affecting your personal natal chart. I encourage you to approach this week with curiosity, courage, and excitement instead of fear and worry. It's easy to get scared when approaching the top of a roller coaster before zooming down into the first drop. If we didn't feel fear, we wouldn't be able to be courageous. The two go hand in hand. It's time to be an astro prepper and get prepared emotionally for whatever may happen. Eclipses are wild cards, and it's hard to tell who or what they will affect. So we're going to take it day by day. Okay, let's get into the astrology. Today, the moon is in Cancer and will be hitting her third quarter phase at 1.14 p.m. at 24 degrees Cancer, 18 minutes, and square the sun in Libra and then oppose Pluto in Capricorn. I was just thinking to myself how I don't like Pluto moon transits and I was walking to the bathroom when I came face to face with a small but large wolf spider, which I've pictured below. I let out a little shriek and jumped a little when I saw it and then I thought, this is so Pluto and the moon. I don't like finding spiders in my house. They always scare me. No matter how friendly these spiders are, they still creep me out and I don't like them in my house. I have a dedicated spider catching system, a cup and an old greeting card, always ready and waiting in my kitchen because I find these spiders in my house almost every day. But this is like Pluto and the moon transits. They happen every month and no matter how much you tell yourself, it's all right. It happens all the time. It's just a little dwarf planet. They always make you jump and scream a little. For comparison, I've also provided a picture of the usual size wolf spiders I find in my house. So there could be a spider in your bathroom today, metaphorically, that brings up feelings of insecurity or fear and you have to deal with it. You have to have the courage to catch and release it. That's a good analogy for Pluto and the moon transits. Catch and release. It's like you are acknowledging the feelings, the creepy crawlies that just came up, and then you are releasing them and letting them go. 
No need to hold on to that spider. Just bless it and throw it out the front door. The third quarter phase of the moon means that the moon has reached the last 90 degree angle from the sun and will now start to close the gap towards the next new moon, which is the partial solar eclipse coming up in eight days. The third quarter phase is all about reorientation and making wine out of the grapes you harvested this month. You can ask yourself questions like, what knowledge have I gained this month that I can now turn around and use to make something new? Being a square aspect, the third quarter phase is about taking action and being productive and making something new out of something you already have. It's not about starting something new or planting seeds. It's about using what we already know and have skills for to make a different form of something, but still using the same ingredients, hence the wine from grapes reference. Venus in Libra makes a quincunx to Neptune in Pisces today at 5.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Venus and Neptune coming together bring up issues involving our relationships, love, money, and values, and we could feel like we are being conned, scammed, or deceived in some way. A quincunx means a separation or a change, and so we may feel that we need to make a change in a relationship or let something go that hasn't been working. We could also feel confused and disoriented by this transit about things we value, love, or have invested in. Venus will be within the three degree orb of this transit for the next three days, but she is moving pretty fast at one degree 15 minutes a day, so we should start to feel this dissipate by Thursday. Sun in Libra makes a trine to Mars and Gemini at 6.05 p.m. Eastern Time, which is a positive aspect that could feel supportive and people may feel an extra boost in energy and drive today to accomplish what they have been thinking about doing. With both the sun and Mars and air signs, this could also be a great day for talking, writing, and getting your ideas out into circulation. With the third quarter square of the moon adding her energy into the mix, this could be like having a lot of ideas for what you can do now that such and such thing has happened. There's an excitement to this energy because it means you can take an initiatory step forward. But there could be a tendency with all this Libra Gemini energy to get a little stuck in the head and be thinking about so many things that you can't decide what to actually nail down and do. Hopefully the moon in watery Cancer opposite Pluto and earthy Capricorn will actually provide an intuitive yet grounded structure to build your ideas on. Let's move on to the card for the day. What is the guidance for today? The Queen of Wands. On this card, we see a queen sitting on her throne. She is wearing a red gown with a golden yellow robe over it. On her robe are lizards and by her feet, there is a real lizard looking up at her. She is gazing outward, apparently beyond the lizard, looking rather stoic. Upon her neck is a large gold necklace with the head of a lion. Under the necklace, she wears a high collar that conceals her throat and lays wide upon her chest in the shape of a sunflower. Behind her, painted on her very tall throne, are two lizards, curved so that their noses touch their tails and make circles. Also painted on her throne and directly behind her crowned head is a lion. She holds a wooden staff with leaves still on it in one hand and rests the other on the arm of her throne. Wands represent spiritual mastery and the Queen of Wands symbolizes mastery of self-knowledge. According to Angelis Arian in the Tarot Handbook, quote, she represents the process of self-discovery and the splendor of awakening to the deepest essence of who we are, unquote. So as our guide for the day, I feel that this card represents using our will and purpose to inspire and uplift those around us. Or it could also represent someone in our lives who is inspiring us to be more of ourselves. The Queen of Wands also represents creativity, intuition, practicality, and passion. We can use these qualities today to help us turn our grapes into wine. Let me know if this reading resonates with you in the comments. I hope this is helpful. Until tomorrow, Astro Mummy. Today's horoscope was brought to you by the moon in the third quarter phase, square the sun and opposite Pluto, Venus, Quincunx, Neptune, and the sun trine Mars, plus a reminder that this weekend starts a hectic roller coaster as we approach the eclipse season. Quick links and resources can be found at the bottom of the newsletter. Today's card was pulled from the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot, available on Amazon. If you purchase anything through the affiliate links that I provide in the newsletters, I will make a small commission, but there are no additional costs to you. I don't share or recommend things that I don't 100% believe in and use myself. Thanks for listening.